Back again with another review. This time I'm looking at the Manfrotto 290 dual tripod. This was sent in via a PR company on behalf of Manfrotto, so it is a sent product review. But as I do with all my videos, I try and be upfront and honest with you and give you a close look at the tripod. Here's some of the included items, the user guide, plate and Allen key. What I've done is put the key features and specs on screen for you, just so that you can refer to that. I will be doing some measurements and some additional testing later on. I'll start off with the head because that's the most obvious place to start. This is quite interesting because it's a three-way head and it's made out of a material they're calling Technopolymer. I'm not an expert on materials, but it does seem to be quite solid. It doesn't feel fragile in any way. I like the fact that the handles and grips are very secure and firm and they're also retractable so you can push them out and pull them back in and you can operate this quite easily with the handles pushed in. You don't have any torsion adjustment on this particular head. There is a little bit of resistance you will feel and it is spring loaded when you're moving it to the forward and backward position. There's a few pros and cons compared to a ball head and they do have a ball head offering for this tripod set. The upside is that that gives you precision over each of the axes individually. The downside is compared to a ball head that is quicker to set up and move. This is the included plate 200PL and this is also made out of that technopolymer material. They're quoting a load rating of 4 kilograms for this. There's your pop-up D-ring that's quite stiff but it means to say you can attach that without using a coin. You've also got some markings on the inside there just to show the lens direction with the arrows. And a quick demonstration on the auto locking mechanism with this. You'll note that you need to push that tab down which is also spring loaded and here's a view from the side and that will release the lever. The grey lever is made of metal, the rest of it is made out of that technopolymer material. Once the plate is pushed down that will automatically lock so you can't release that until you've pushed that part down. One downside for me is that this is not Arca Swiss compatible. And that could be a bit of a shame, especially if you've got a lot of plates around or those L brackets. They have quite a thick, chunky grip on the knob and the handles. I do quite like it. It does give a very firm, feels very tactile and provides quite a lot of grip. As I said earlier, there is a bit of resistance on this when you're moving it so it doesn't flop around even once you've loosened it off. Perhaps that's deliberate so that it doesn't move too easily. Just show you a few measurements now with the handle. So it's just over 11 centimeters from front to back when it's collapsed, expanded out. It's around about 15 centimeters. I'll just unscrew the head now and take that off so I can show you the plate underneath. This is quite a chunky plate, quite thick, and it's quite wide around about six centimeters in diameter. That is the 3 8 thread. This oval shape or alien shape as such, that's where you extend out the column and then flip it over. That gives you your horizontal angle on the head. That's why they're calling it a two-way system. Once you've unscrewed it, you can just lift it up. But you'll notice there is a safety mechanism on this. What you need to do is push in that red button and that retracts partially that small tab that you see sticking out there. That will allow you to lift it up and then bring it across into the horizontal position. What it doesn't do is let you completely take out the column and to do that what you'll need to do is just push in on the safety release. Then you can decide how far you want the column to come out. You can push it back in and then lock it off or you can fully rotate it around at different angles 360 degrees. Just a quick note, the holder for that, that oval shape that I mentioned earlier, that is metal. If you want to take that column out fully, then all you need to do is push that button down. I've just shone a torch in there to show you. Just give you a close up on the column. Now you can see it's got sort of rounded edges to it, sort of triangular shape almost. If you're going to put this back in, make sure you put it back with the tab sticking out so that it's in that cutout section there. Not like I'm showing you here because I put it in wrong. Nice chunky grip on the leg, same material as we see on the plate and on the handles. It's very textured, very grippy, probably one of the best that I've used on a tripod. Silver parts here are sandblasted aluminium. They are spring-loaded and you have a total of four leg positions. 
the lowest position is pretty much flat to the ground almost. And I'll give you a couple of examples on some pictures. At the lowest position, you can see the head is pretty much touching the ground with the center part of the tripod just slightly off the surface. As this has three leg sections, the material is quite thick. The legs are aluminium as well. Typically when you go to more sections, it means the stability isn't quite as good. Tops of the legs and around it are all metal, cast metal, so I assume it's aluminium again. They've gone with the flip or lever locks, which I personally prefer. I just find it quicker and easier to deploy and put it back. Very thick rubber feet on this with a hole there, so you can put spikes in there if you want, and you'll note that it doesn't go the whole way through. Here is the adjuster if you want to adjust the locks. So all you need to do is open those up, and then you can twist that around. Tripod on its own is just over 1.8 kilograms, and the head is around about the 750 grams. Just give you a demonstration now of the column reversed. Honestly, don't think you'll be doing this very often, purely because you can flip out the column to a 90 degree position, and I honestly think that will be low enough for most people. And that really is the main feature of it. There's been a few different tripods that I've looked at, I've looked at a few from KNF. I've got a Velborn one myself, which does something similar. This is perhaps a more elegant solution than the KNF ones. It does feel a bit more secure and it does lock fully once you tighten it up. With four leg angles, there's plenty of positions on this tripod, but do bear in mind if you are using it with the column at 90 degrees, that you might want to bring the legs out to increase the stability. But it's a pretty stable tripod, even fully extended, just over 175 centimeters. With the thicker aluminium that they've used, there isn't much flexing on the legs, so I'm pretty happy with the overall stability on this. I'll demonstrate it now with a slightly heavier lens. This combination is going to be around about two kilograms in weight. Don't have any concerns with that lens and camera staying on there. It's very firm and solid plate is big enough for the lens collar and the fact that the head is a bit larger probably helps a bit with stability as well. Give you a quick size comparison with a couple of other tripods that I have. It'd be fair to say this isn't the smallest tripod out there. That is the Vilbon boom arm. I might do a video on that later on, but for macro photography, this is quite useful. I'd say for home or studio use, this would be quite a good tripod to look at. The most obvious complaint that I have is the fact that we don't have an Arca Swiss compatible head. That could definitely be annoying for some people. And I think that Manfrotto should design some more heads that are compatible with those plates. It could be quite a useful tripod, particularly if you're going to make use of that horizontal center column. That is something which I like myself. Any thoughts and questions on this, do let me know in the comments section as usual. Do shop around for deals. I've seen some fairly decent prices on this on Amazon, so I put the links below. So that wraps it up for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.